Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Heights High School tonight. Uh, we've got uh, some homecoming festivities. They're going to start here in just a minute with me, Mitch. Good to have you back again. Oh, yeah, i got to turn your volume on. There you go. Thanks, Matt. It's good to be back. Um, so, yeah, it should be a good game here with uh, Wichita South and Wichita Heights homecoming tonight. And uh, they're going to start those festivities any minute. And whenever they get done with that, we've got a little pregame. We've got some highlights for you. And uh, we'll be back here shortly. Until then, we're going to have to kind of turn the music off because they're playing some music in the background, music copyright violations and all that. But we're going to uh, – hopefully we get uh, some, some good sound from our PA here in the uh, press box. It's Mr. Uh, Graham is our PA for tonight, so you'll hear his voice a little bit. We've got Ivan on the scoreboard. We've got Derek on a camera. We've got Kyle on a camera. And we got Xavier back here switching up between our two little views. So – and Mitch, of course, can't forget me, uh, Mitch here. So we appreciate Mitch coming over. And um, yeah, it'll be a fun to be back up in the booth. I've I've it's watched. Been, it's I, been three weeks. It has. I've I've watched the last two weeks. I've been on on uh, sideline level right. at North Game. That's so I'm I'm excited to see Heights again. All right, and so. we're gonna get ready. We're gonna go turn off our mics and turn up the crowd noise, and you can hear Mr. Graham for homecoming. Morgan is the daughter of Jennifer Armstrong. 
All right, so there is the homecoming candidates uh, about th out there on the field. You see the ROTC, the band's getting ready. Looks like Mr. Walker and the Madrigals are coming. But, man, we got a football game here tonight between the 3-2 uh, and two Heights Falcons and 1-4 one and, uh, one and, one and one and four four South High Titans. Titans. The um, Falcons uh, won the first game against Goddard Eisenhower, lost against Northwest, beat North. Uh, beat West and lost last week to Andover. So looking to turn that around this week against Wichita South. And, and South, they started off with uh, two tough games where they, they lost 55-0 to zero to Capon and 35-6 uh, to six to Carroll. And then uh, travel uh, home against Dodge City where they lost 16-35. to 35, And then a big game against North winning 70-0. to zero, And then they traveled to Pittsburgh 35-20 to 20 loss. So we got a pretty good game here coming up. We're getting ready to do the national anthem. We'll be back in just a few minutes.
All right, we got a little bit of a uh, little bit of time here before they uh, they come in, so we'll go a little bit uh, talk a little bit about the uh, the Heights Falcons. Uh, we we live streamed uh, the first two games of the season. Got it, Eisenhower Heights won 28 to 23, good comeback win, and then lost uh, 40 to 62 to Wichita Northwest. So we actually have a few highlights of that, and so we're going to play. We got a, a minute or so of uh, of um, some highlights between um, Goddard Eisenhower and. Um, Wichita Heights. We're going to play that here in just a minute. Backside, he's gonna throw the ball a little clear out route underneath. He gets hit as he's thrown, balls up, intercepted. And that's number 32. Who's number 32? Number 32 for Heights. I think he was coming backside and just didn't stop. Little flash fake. Oh, and almost blown up, but I think he was coming backside and just didn't stop. Little flash fake. Oh, and almost blown up, but right there. I can see a little zone read to this side. They're gonna crash on Randall and get get it to zoom out. Zoom out. There you go. That's a good view right there. Stick with that. Here on the heights roster. Yeah, so but Fisher's second year or third year as head coach. They're going to go back. He's going to drop, and there's another. I, I want to say those are read routes. Lowry pops backside. He's going to throw the ball. A little clear out route underneath. He gets hit as he's thrown. Ball's up. Intercepted. And that's number 32. Who's number 32? Number 32 for Heights. I think he was coming backside and just didn't stop. Little flash fake. Oh, and almost blown up, but I think he was coming backside and just didn't stop. Little flash fake. Oh, and almost blown up, but right there. I can see a little zone read to this side. They're going to crash on Randall and get get it to Dingle for it. For the Tigers. He's going to hand it to John Randall, who rumble, bumble, stumbles for Second and ten. Looks like they're going to try to give it to John Randall on the edge. And he's going to plant his foot in the ground, and he's going to make people miss. And he's going to go the distance right there. That's a great start for the Falcons. 45-yard touchdown run. So there's another. That's a that's a little power play. Oh, and good sneak and get for some underneath routes. Swing to the backside. Nope, he's gonna try to scramble a little bit. And he throws the ball up again, and there's another interception. Interception for number one. One thing you do 
Oh, and they're gonna give it a power play to Randall. And he just makes guys miss. Just So there was the final touchdown right there. Uh, got the touchdown and then we got the pick and, um, and sealed the deal there to win the game. And uh, we've got the Heights Falcons are, are starting to make their way towards the tunnel. And uh, we got the tunnel out there. Heights is uh, kind of, we got pink awareness here. Cheerleaders out there in pink. You see them with the pink palms and the pink sweatshirts. And the, uh, Hit as he's thrown, kind of like up, the throw, I know, it's kind of a throwback, you know, when they got that flare That's white. It's kind of cool looking. Number 32. Um, so, um, number 32 the, the Pommies, the they got little pink ribbons on. They got pink in their hair. And I uh, see a lot of pink uh, out in the crowd. Tonight is also a, a big, big night, homecoming tonight. We've got a lot of alumni back here at the game. Uh, if you guys are at home watching, we appreciate you guys tuning in. And... Um, I'm Mr. Kelly. Kelly. I've been here for, for a long time. Been here since Ooh, 1997. Did my student teaching in 1997 Ooh. and been here Mike ever since. Coached football for a long, long time. Done a lot They're of things. And here Randall. come the Heights Falcons and through the tunnel playing Dingle the fight Bruce. song. Fumble, fumble, stumble. All right, we got something else here for you. We have a couple years ago, uh, you probably don't remember this, but uh, one of our assistant principals, Kevin Steiner, was the assistant, was the head coach at South High. Yep. And we had a little issue one time with Freddie the Falcon. Uh, Freddie the Falcon, we, we got a picture of him here. Double click on that one. There you go. There's Freddie the Falcon right there. And then we had this little situation right here play out. Freddie the Falcon went over on the field during the game and waved the flag in front of South High and their head coach, which is a, one of our assistant principals, Kevin Steiner. Sorry about the shaky video. We got this from um, handheld phone back in the day, but I believe this was like 2013 or something like that, a long time ago. And then you see it here just a second. They're going to be escorted out by the AD, Rick Wheeler. There was our, our principal, Bruce Dieterding. Um, but anyway, that was uh, Mr. Steiner goes, hey, Mr. Kelly, are you going you gonna to show the video of, of, of me getting flagged down by Freddie the Falcon? I said, you know what? We might just have to do that, Mr. Steiner. So always. we pulled that up. It's always a great little thing to do. And uh, oh, it, it, it's a memory that you'll <laughs> yeah. always have, that he'll always he'll have. He'll always have. That, that that student will always have. Yep. I mean, that's, that's one of the things that makes high school football great is the memories yep. we make when we play it and uh, coach it. I don't know if we can get it. We got a shot of Coach Dingle down there on the sideline. He's even in pink. Derek, you get a shot down there, Coach Dingle. Where's he at? There he is right there. There's Coach Dingle on the sideline in his pink jersey. I like it. Uh, I, I, he was all black earlier, and I thought he was uh, going to Johnny Cash it out and uh, be all black today, but uh, I like the pink shirt. We got the pink socks. And uh, Heights does a pretty cool thing with all of their um, – um, their pink awareness stuff, they actually, if they're going to wear pink, they donate some money to that, and then they give that money out to a deserving person who maybe who have overcome cancer or maybe has someone that's dealing with it right now. Um, so they, they actually gave it to one of their one of their assistant coaches a few years ago. His wife was going through some some um, um, some cancer issues, and uh, they donated it to her to help pay for some of the bills and stuff like that, which was really, really cool. Yeah. And um, so that's kind of what they do with their pink out. I'm not sure if other schools do that or not. I mean, um, I've you know what? That's that's unique and that's that's pretty special. I've uh, I coached I coached for te uh, ten years and I never even thought of that. That's a pretty good idea. Yep. How about we get a shot of the the cheerleaders down there, Derek? You get a shot of the cheerleaders down there and their uh, their their old time outfits. 
Look at those old time outfits. I, I, it's kind of neat. Like it. Pink palms, pink sweatshirt. Is it a sweatshirt or a t-shirt? They're going to get hot. It's warm up here today. It is warm up here. It's a 90 degree day in October. And for those of you guys that didn't know, if you're not in from this area, we didn't have school today because there was a water main break in Wichita and um, water main break in Wichita and we didn't have school. So they shut down school, shut down everything. So we had the day off. I didn't get here till almost about 3.30 or so, 4 o'clock. By the time I got up here to get ready for the game, yeah. luckily we had everything. We brought everything out uh, Thursday morning and had everything pretty much ready to go. We just had, just had to turn things on and, and uh, be ready to go for the game. Well, I'm, gl I'm glad they made that call. I, uh, I, I work at North. I work on the third floor at North. Yeah. So you, I can't no tell water you, pressure. I, well, no water pressure, no water fountains that they could use. Mm -hmm. I can't tell you how many times I let people go to the water fountain. I, I'm right by the stairway. I see people come up. They have to go up the two flights of stairs and hit the water fountain because they've done an aerobic workout just to get up to the third floor. So I'm glad we aired on the, the side of safety for the kids today. We got captains out there. Uh, number two for the Falcons, that's uh, DJ Dingle. That's their quarterback. Uh, number eight, I'm trying to get to with my roster. Is that number eight? Why do I not have a number eight on my roster? I think that's number nine. Is that nine? Is that Hamilton, Jaden Hamilton? Yeah, they have. Okay. Yep. It's, it's kind of hard to read. And then number three is R.J. Richard back. R.J. Richard is back. He's a senior that got his elbow hurt earlier in the season. I think it might have been, been the uh, the first scrimmage and had somewhat of a separated elbow and was out for uh, a few weeks. And I, this is the first time we've had a home game in three weeks. So right. he might have came back last week or the week before. But um, he's a good kid, so good to see him back there out on the field as a senior, getting to finish out his senior year out on here on the field. So, yep. Captain, Captains for uh, South was number seven. Their leading receiver, Damian Beaver, and uh, Jose Perez, number 22, and number 76, Carlos Sosa. Um, so we got the heights. We got heights in all black tonight with the pink socks. We got South High over there in their white jerseys, blue helmets, and red pants. And uh, should be a good game. There is, I mean, not a lick of wind. Flag on the north side of the stadium here, not blowing whatsoever. Got a pretty decent crowd here. Band's going to be playing at halftime. Hey, stick around for after the game. We got the glow show. Mm. The Heights glow show. We'll see how it looks on camera, but they turn off all the lights and the band has glow sticks or something. So we'll see how that goes. Here is the kickoff. For the foul, uh, looks like South High is going to uh, kick it off. And back, back deep for the Falcons. Number one, Adrian Patterson. And uh, kicking off for the Titans is Marquise Tolfrey, uh, senior, and he's also their starting running back. So he kicks it and just runs down as fast as he can. Looks like they kicked it short, but they kicked it to the wrong guy. Wrong guy, John Randall. Face mask. Come on, where's the flag? I don't think he got a face mask. Think, uh, I think it was closer to a man, that's closer close. to a, a horse collar, but he didn't come down on it. I saw his head. Back. I saw his head turn. I thought they were calling the face mask, but didn't call it right there. So yeah, they, they kicked it short and they kicked it to the wrong guy. Yeah, you don't want to kick it to John Randall on that. Um, I think that might be why why they Heights puts him there. Yeah, because everyone's expecting him to be the deep man. Well, I gotta do is look at his jersey. How hard is that? <laughs> uh, you you you've coached high school football. You know you know that you know the yeah. answer to that question. There's a there's a uh, eight yard run there for number nine, Jaden Hamilton. Is that Jaden or was that I John that Randall? Was John. That okay. was a downhill run from the pistol set from John, and uh, taken down by uh, both the linebackers for for South, uh, Di Diallo and Macias. Quarterback for the Falcons, that's DJ Dingle. That is the head coach's son. And he's uh, running running backs right there, John Randall. And then also tried to get a little uh, little read right there, trying to see who they give, gave that to. I believe that's number number one. That's Adrian Patterson. Adrian Patterson's going to lose about, and we'll probably say he just lost one yard and on big, that one. Big stop by Cam Campbell and Sosa. So brings up about third and three. They're going to give it right back to John Randall. He finds his way, slithers through, picking up the first down. 
we'll, we'll give that, that two-point takedown of a tackle to uh, Sarion uh, Hennigan. That's going to be about a 10-yard gain for Randall. I think it's just, did they read anything on that one? Did you, could you tell on that? Uh, I didn't look too closely. I was watching. Hey, I was watching the tackler. Yeah, he's I mean, just he's just a slippery guy. There's Adrian Patterson trying to go on the jet sweep. Oh, didn't have it timed out right. And talk about being the right place at the right time. Uh, Damian Beaver just gets run into and gets that that tackle. So Adrian Patterson has a negative one yard carry, and now he's got a uh, no yard zero. So his his average is not good. So got to find other ways to get him the ball. They, so they'll far. they'll do it. It's early in the game. Actually, he might have lost a yard. We're going to say he didn't lose a yard. Okay. And I, John Randall with a nice little move to pick up about three. Tackled by uh, T.J. Neal, South High's do everything. He's, al he's also their starting quarterback. Starting quarterback, leading uh, leading rusher, starting quarterback. Uh, I'll talk more about him in depth when we get they get into offense. But yeah, he's their do everything guy. Everything runs through him. Going to go play action pass. Nice play right there to Lafayette Washington picking up the touchdown. 29-yard touchdown pass from DJ Dingle to Lafayette Washington. And that was just a little flash fake, uh, flash fake on the jet sweep, which brought your safeties up, made sure that he was one-on-one -on -one out there on Neil, on uh, Caden Neal. Um, and it's just... Who wants the ball more? A great throw, great fake all around there by DJ and getting that ball to uh, Lafayette and then Lafayette making that guy miss. Uh, pretty good play right there. Here is the kicker, Caden Claussen. This is his senior year. He's actually been a kicker for the Heights Falcons for four years. He has been kicking on varsity all four years that he's been here, even as a freshman. And, uh, Curious, uh, I might have to look that up for our next final home game and see where he's at on the scoring list. Oh, he's got to uh, be. He's got to be up there. been there for a long time with kicking a lot of extra points, and he's got a few field goals mixed in there. But uh, well, you, but you also had some state championship teams that put up a <laughs> lot of points. Yeah, actually, so. we had a we had a historical record broken last week: 99-yard touchdown return on a kickoff from number one, Adrian Patterson. There you go. School hips, uh, it was 98 yards. 98 yards was the previous record, and now it's 99. One of the, I was talking to the assistant coaches. He was like, one of the other assistant coaches want to give him 100, but we kind of decided 99. Well, you, you, you can't give him 100 because if it goes to the goal line, it's a dead ball. Right. So it's 99. So right. 99 is as much as you can go. Uh, back, back deep for the Titans, you have uh, uh, Bieber. Again, their their leading receiver and one of their better defenders. And he's gonna actually get a chance to return this one. Beaver up the right left side. Oh, and good pursuit by the Falcons. And that's number 22 on the tackle. 22 or 32. I might uh, Dominique Galloway. I think that was 32 or 22 was Avante Scales. Could be either one of those. But uh, yeah, usually Caden Clausen puts it in the end zone, especially with no win. Maybe he just got underneath that a little bit, or maybe they're just going to try to give him a return and work on that uh, uh, kickoff team, team, work on the coverage team for sure. All right, coming out for South again. You have uh, number two, T.J. Neal, is there, or is there? They're everything. Everything player for the Titans. They're going to be in a gun look, doubles with an H back, offset running back. Um, I think the officials are holding the holding the play for some reason. Yeah, I don't know. The play clock's not going. Is that? Well, the play clock guy's back here on about the 45 or so, so close to the midfield. So T.J. Neal with a little quarterback run, snuffed out. He's going to get back to the line of scrimmage. First, that is it. First there on the uh, play for the Falcons, number 10, Nate Campbell. And Nate Campbell was uh, right there in the backfield for maybe, looks like no game. Yep. And T.J. Neal's their leading rusher, although he's the quarterback. 285 yards on the on the season with two touchdowns. Uh, 
And we got a flag on the you play. You either have a false start or an offsides from the person who threw that flag. I'm guessing it's an offsides because he was the line, line judge. There you go. You called it offsides. Couldn't tell who who they. I think I think Heights was trying to time up a blitz, and they just got a linebacker. Little linebacker early. got excited. Yep. Came just across a little bit too early. And you know, with the three-four defense that you, uh, that Heights runs, you always want to bring somebody um, from the linebacker position. All right, little quick slam, but it's picked off. Is it picked? It is picked by number. 13, 13, 13 right there. That's Eliza Tresvant. That was a pretty good little play right there. Was it tipped? I couldn't tell if it was tipped or not. So it hit, it hit number, it hit uh, Neil's hand. So number nine, Neil's hand, put it up in the air, and uh, Heights just made a great play, diving catch. Diving catch right there for Tresvant, and you see all the excitement there by all the guys on the sideline. It's always good to see when those guys get together and have some excitement. Heights is going to put trips into the boundary. Last time they did this, they motioned the guy out, but they're going to stay with it. They motioned the guy across last time they had it, but uh, they're going to call a false start again here. Yep, and that was only that was only uh, T.J. Neal's second interception of the season. He's usually pretty uh, pretty efficient. He has 90, 905 yards on the season, 10 TDs. Yeah. So he's usually pretty efficient with the ball, it's just a little tip got away from him and an athletic play got the ball back to Heights. Heights still gonna stay with that formation going trips and they're just gonna run a little play action pass. Ooh. Post right up the middle. And again, that, that good fake and the South High's, South High's respect for the running game and John Randall. That was a 35 yard, 35 yard touchdown pass to Chase Harris from DJ Dingle, so both touchdown scores have been, well, he's got two completions for two touchdowns right yes, now. Yes, he has. So Talk about efficiency. Th that's pretty good right there. So yeah, 35 yards for Chase Harris, and here's uh, Caden Clawson back up there for another extra point. And then again, it's 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 South, uh, respect to the running game, the safeties came up, left a gap for the receiver to score. Well, you know, it's it's a pretty good design. Hopefully, I mean, designed out good by the uh, uh, offensive coordinator, Corby Millison, by putting the trips to the sideline, which is going to put everybody over there. Now you got your best receiver one on one on the on the open side, and they go with a play action fake. There was no safety in the middle yep. for just a straight little, almost like a slant play. Slant's probably one of the easiest completions that you can make. Yes. And. Two touchdown passes for TJ Dingle. What can you say? I'd say catch the ball, Katie bar the door, we're gone. <laughs> 14 lead here early in the foul for the Falcons. 829 remaining here in the first quarter. Man, might and be a high scoring game at this rate. And again, Beaver is back to back deep. We'll see if uh we'll see if Clawson gives him a chance for another return. I'm thinking he's gonna give him a chance here, just like they did it last time, or maybe he's like, oh, I know they're tied, it was pretty quick. Pretty quick little turnover. Maybe kick it in the zone this time. Nope, he's gonna no, do another little one. Oh, that's so a nice little chip shot. And Beaver just trying to get forward and get positive yards, gets up to the 26 yard line. Tackled to number 20 right there, Caleb Roper. Caleb Roper on the uh, tackle. Okay. And you know what? I appreciate the fact that South, we were hope we were able to get the starting lineups for oh yeah for South. Let's let me let me go through the starting offense for South. And uh, like I said, your quarterback is Neal. Your uh, running back would be Tolfrey, Beaver, Wade, Mullen, and Clark are at wide receiver. Um, big boys up front at center. My position: Nunez, and then Sosa, Hardgrave. Witzel and Mazdek, and it looked like they did a little power read option, and uh, quarterback took it, held on to it, gained two yards. That was Neal. Tackle there from number 44, Jaden Caldwell. He's a 6'2", 185-pound senior. Uh, he's been kind of one of the, their senior leaders there on defense, been there the whole year as well. And um, let's see where he's out on the list. We got a couple stats. He's got uh, 10 tackles on the season. 
10 tackles for, no, I'm sorry, I'm looking at the wrong guy. Jaden Caldwell, 17 uh, so, uh, solo tackles. And 29 assists, 46 total, sorry. South looked like they were doing a little RPO, little play action, and then with just a little indecision, wide receivers went a little further down the field than Neal thought they were gonna go. Incomplete pass. Brings up about second and eight here. And Heights pretty much in their 4-3 defense. Now it looks like they're gonna go no, maybe more of a 3-4. Yeah, more of a 3-4, yeah. you're right. Bringing a linebacker, linebacking blitz and they run by one of the guys. Looks like a little bit, a little bit of a draw with toll free for about four yards, five yards. And then brings up number 32, was that 32 there on the tackle? I believe that was number 32. That was Dominique Galloway. We showed Dominique Galloway with his speed a little bit earlier in our pregame highlight. He was the one that returned that long touchdown run uh, against Eisenhower. Maybe at the half, we've got some other highlights. We've got Northwest highlights that we didn't get to show you. We'll try to maybe do that during halftime. South has their punt formation a little, little shallow, but your, your quarterback is the punter. Again, I said he's their do everything. Lefty, lefty punter. High punt right there. Gonna and call Patterson. the fair catch. Whew. That he was did a, it. That was that, he got it. He got it away. <laughs> fell to that the ground. That was the little lady almost uh, muffed that punt. 6.52 here remaining here in the first quarter. We'll just uh, let you hear the band for a moment. All right, we got a little bit of band rolling down there. So you hear the band with direction Mr. Kemp. Heights here looks like going to be on the 30-yard line. Oh, and and it looks like they had 3-4. They had a dialed-up blitz to. And they to just straight took out one of the, the uh, chain gang guys over there. Oh, that's when you work the chains, you got to be ready to go. Was that, is that Mr. Weens? Oh, he's got to get out of the way. Yes, yes. <laughs> hey, it's uh, his first night tonight. It I is. I called him up. Okay. We had someone cancel out on us tonight and so I had to like hey man would you be interested in doing this? yeah yeah I'll do the sideline I said okay because he's an athletic guy he's fine yeah uh, rides his bike almost every day to practice but he got taken out there here's a completion right here to Adrian Patterson gonna pick up about four yards on that one and, and tackle by Neil so we're gonna hey you know what he rides his bike every day we'll see he if does. he can take a hit and keep well, going yeah, that's Looks gonna like be a story for him to tell for sure he it looked like it got up a little slow he, it did it did no, that's when you when you see the wall coming, you drop the chains and go. Yeah, and he's on the oh. down marker, so he's he's the one that he's, he's the one that's got to get out of the way. Yeah, but he's also always in the mix of the play if they're coming right to the sideline. Yep, and South South jumps off off sides to give uh, five free yards to Heights there. Man, that that you always got to like that as an offense, especially when you go from third and th third and seven to third and two. You go from behind the chains to looking really good, and. DJ Dingle stepping back, gonna run a little, uh, oh, Ooh. almost just a little bit too high. They cleared out the two inside guys and run like a little dig route with Chase Harris, and it's gonna be an incomplete pass. We'll see if Heights goes for this. Wouldn't be surprised, up 14 to zero here early in the first quarter, just to see if they can uh, keep the chains going. Well, if you have a, and you have a workhorse behind you in the pistol set. Um, and John is John is that guy, and he's right there behind him. I would be giving the ball probably to John. Or oh, they're going to run a little, little speed, speed option. option. Going to pick it up for DJ. He's going to get the first down by one yard, picking and, uh, up three yards there for DJ. Tackle tackle by uh, Caden Neal for the, the Titans. And uh, Titans are playing the 3-4 defense just like Heights wa was. Um, I feel like that's, the, that's what a lot of people are in now. They've been going to the 3-4 for a while. Um, back when I played, everybody was in the 4-2, or when I started coaching, everybody was in the 4-2, 4-3. And a little tip there, little tip there by uh, Serranian Hennigan. DJ tried to, uh, uh, looks like he was trying to kind of roll out of the pocket a little bit and try to get that ball. And he saw a guy standing there and just didn't see the defender was close enough that he made the play and got the tip on it. 
and bringing up second and 10 here for the Falcons. They're going to put uh, twins down here, and they've got uh, double backfield, triple backfield, really, if you kind of look at it with the DJ back there. He could run or roll out and pass, and he's just going to do a little shuffle pass to John Randall, and they're going to say lineman downfield possibly or maybe a late hit. Um, I'm, thinking, I'm thinking it's a holding. The, the okay. first flag is probably holding, but there is one, there is a flag near where the attack was made, so I'm thinking that's a whole different penalty. So it could be a holding there. It could be a face mask. Holding. Okay. They both saw holding. So Both of them saw holding. Could have been holding in two different places. I don't know. When I coach DJ's off. trying to plead his case right there, talking to the umpire. Just needs to just calm down. It's all right. It's still early. It's second and looks like almost uh, about 18 or so. I don't know. When I – when I coached offensive line, I told my guys to hold every play. Just don't get caught. Yeah, keep those hands inside. Hands inside, move your feet. It's not holding if you're not extended. Play action pass here. DJ running to the right. Dangerous pass, but he gets it to Chase Harris. Nice job right there. Nice high pass, and Chase Harris picks up that for about a 20 – about a 20-yard gain. It was second and 18 and 20 yards there for uh, Chase Harris. And he's just throw, he threw it up because he trusted his receiver to go up and get it. Yeah. And Chase Harris is that guy. I mean, he's, he's their top receiver. Uh, I'll try to look to the stats here just a second to see where we're at on offensive-wise. On, on, uh, I, 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 think, I think Chase Harris was the wide receiver that was on ESPN for You Got Moss. That's with, right, he did. With his play against North. Yep. There's uh, 12 more yards there for John Randall. And uh, takedown for, for Heights made by uh, Damian Beaver. Don't have receiving stats. I've got passing stats and passing stats. Um, Randall with the run. Randall's going to gain about five there. Looks like about, yep, you're right. Another five yards for Randall. Bringing up second and 10, or second and five, correction. About the, where are they at, 28 yard line, right in the middle of the hashes. DJ's gonna keep it on the quarterback. Fake, he's gonna cut it all the way back. He's gonna pick up a first down. He's gonna pick up about seven yards on that carry. For yeah. DJ and uh, Ross Robinson with the tackle for the Titans. 3.58 remaining here in the first quarter. Another first and 10 here for the Falcons. Got double wide. Right in the middle of the field. They could go either way. John Randall, they're going to motion one to the left. They're going to give it to Mr. Lafayette Washington. He's going to go around the end. Thought he might have had a little bit more time to get there, but uh, gets caught up and... About six yard gain. And snagged by Beavers on uh, number seven from uh We've said that name South. a lot, haven't we? We have. We he's, have he's again. all over the place on defense and he's and their uh, leading receiver on offense. Yep. Um so Neil so, and Beavers. Well and this this is what it is. They play a a three four. He's one I look he looks like he's the strong side outside linebacker, which puts him right in the in the mesh. Seven yard run for for John Randall. He's racking up the yards. We'll try to maybe at halftime get you totals and stuff like that. We're just kind of eyeballing it as best we can, or at least I am, for the Heights Falcons and trying to get them stats. And, and um, we'll try to add some things up at halftime and give you a report coming back from the second half. But it's going to be first and goal from the five. Going to give it right back to John. He's going to try to get in there, and Muscles he's going to muscle in. his way in there for a five-yard touchdown for John Randall. So pretty good drive right there for the Falcons. Went for it on fourth down back here at about the 35 yard line, made it, and then just kept moving the chains with a couple passes, couple runs right there. And here comes Caden Claussen for a chance to go up by three scores if he can make this extra point. And we're missing somebody. They're missing somebody on the line or something. And yep. There you go right there. They're, they're yelling at him. But 51. We're going to give him a little love here. 51. Hadn't called his name yet. Is that 51? Yeah. Javen Martin. There you go. Sophomore. Forgot he was on uh, extra point. 
He made it, though, just in time. Yes, he did. I think they held the, they held the play clock for him, I think. Caden Clausen with the kick up and good. So Heights up 21-0, 256 remaining here in the – shoot, we're still in the first quarter? First quarter, we're going to turn over to the band and let you listen to them a little bit. There's a little bit of shot of the band right there, down there. And, uh, oh, Freddie Falcon's down there with the cheerleaders. Oh, there's Freddie the Falcon. Derek, we need to get a shot of Freddie the Falcon if we can. Kyle, you get ready for the kickoff here. We won't miss that. But if there's Freddie the Falcon, we were telling you about that uh, story earlier. There's actually, I think it's a new, different little outfit now than the old one that we used to have in the video. But uh, there's Freddie the Falcon. Doesn't look like he's very excited, does he? Well, well that, that one's a legend. Yeah. So we had to, you had, you had to retire that one. Yeah. Oh crowd is loud. Let me turn that uh, microphone down there. Caden Clausen still not kicking it very deep tonight. Good, give him a chance to always return it about the five yard line. It looks like that's Beavers again. Beavers. And you just have Heights' coverage team is just zooming past the uh, kick return team of South right now and um, able to converge on that carrier. Number 22, Avante Sc uh, Scales was the uh, the guy who made the big hit. I mean, I heard the pop in the microphone up here. Yes. And Sounded pretty good. So Well, mul multiple Falcons got him, so you could say a Tower of Falcons got him. That's right. We looked at that last time, didn't we? The Tower of Falcons. <laughs> I'll, I'll let you have Tower, even though that's kind of north high. But And a Tower, remind me of, remind us of what Tower was. We talked about that last time. So a Tower is the, the best word we found for a group of Falcons. There you go. A Tower of Falcons. Yes. There were some other words, but I couldn't remember. I was like, oh, they, they, didn't, they, they didn't, didn't make sense. They didn't seem too tough. No. They didn't, yeah, they didn't, seem, didn't make sense. All right, so we have doubles. Doubles look from, from south. They're going to do a read, little RPO. Oh, and my out of the gosh. Hands. That really get picked off right there? It, it, it Carter did. Aikens, 31. Isn't that 31? 30. No. Yeah, 31. And they're going to have a – Yep. It's like a deflection. They tried yeah. to run a little RPO deflecting and went right into his hands. And oh, my gosh, right off the defender. Well, and, and talk about for South, it's what else can go wrong? <laughs> like every single wow. thing they think, all right, we've got this. We've got a perfect play. They did. It hit him in his hands. It would have been a five-yard gain. Yep. But it turns into a turnover. DJ with a little quick little uh, screen pass out there to Lafayette, Washington. Well, Big I, hit. I'm gonna say I'm gonna say his name again. That's Beaver. Yeah. Yeah. He just returned so. the kick and then made the stop there. That's gonna be a loss of uh, loss he, of about two. He might have been listening to the broadcast when I said Neil was their their do everything and said, "Hey, watch me. Take a look. So. I'm pretty good too." Heights uh, looks like trips to the field here. Looks like they're going to bring pressure with Beaver off the edge. Lafayette Washington right up the middle. He's just going to skate by everybody for a 22-yard gain for Mr. Lafayette Washington. I don't know if that – I didn't see anybody pull. I was just like straight up, right up the middle, and he just might have made a couple of those linebackers miss and scored another score for the yeah, Falcons. That's just, that's just an inside zone look where they double – double the down lineman to capture any linebacker and and really south brought two people they brought an edge and a back and a, a front side a backside edge and a front side linebacker i saw on the blitz there. i saw a big number 76 carlos solas is that so sosa he really just kind of standing just kind of watch him run right by him caden clausen with the kick he's taking one step and kick and it's good Heights up 28-0 here in the first quarter with 159 remaining. There's Freddie the Falcon. We got the face view of Freddie the Falcon down there. Oh, and then he turned around all of a sudden. Goodness gracious. He was excited there for a little bit. 
They, he wasn't reading our mind when we when we. I were know going we're trying to, to give him some love on the touchdown. I guess we'll have to get to him a little bit sooner. He's dancing a little bit on there. I don't even know who it is. He's I think it's a student. <laughs> yeah, whoever it is is washboard abs. <laughs> Caden Clausen back to kick again. Finally, maybe he's going to put one through the end zone. And yep, it goes into that red turf. There you go. So he's been the uh, Caden Clausen decided just to go ahead and kick one deep. I think they were trying to work on some of that coverage there, and then they said, "Hey, right now we've been scoring a lot. Let's just kick it out of the end zone and." Let our defense play a little bit. Be a touchback at the 20. And with that touchback, no time goes off the clock. So we're still at 159. Remaining here in the first quarter. I see the uh, the sideline guy over there. He looks okay. He's he's running around all right now. Or the uh, uh, official that kind of got run over official. The, chain the gang. Chain gang worker. Like we call it the chain gang worker over there. All right, little... Little quarterback sweep action with Neal. Breaks a tackle. Stiff arm coming up with a tackle right there. Number 32 is Dominique Galloway. So a 52 yard run for TJ Neal, trying to do whatever they can to get some life. And now, I mean, and it really was just a simple quarterback sweep. Yes, it was. I mean, it was just snap to him and let him go. And he just raced by all of our guys. I didn't see any missed tackles. And then finally, Dominique Galloway is the one to stop them. So they need anything they can here to get a little fire underneath them and see if they can't turn this thing around for the uh, Titans. Again, a modified trips look down here at the bottom. In motion, you have Beavers. Little high snap. Ball's out, but it looks like Beavers jumped on it for a loss of loss of four or five. Five. Hit him right in the hands and just kind of went right through. I couldn't tell. Maybe it might have been a little high. Well, and, um, as a center, as a center, I'd always say it's the quarterback's fault. If they yeah. if they touched it, they should get it. But as a coach, I always blame my center and said, "Hey, you got uh, to make that sure was it's right there." That was quarterback there on that one. It went right through his hands. Good snap by the center. We'll give the, we'll give the center some love. There you go. Brings so. up about second and fifteen here right. from about the thirty-two yard line. Little doubles look. Ah, oh, looks like they're going to do some little crossing patterns but they're going to call flash. a pass interference there because Adrian Patterson was trying to go through the guy that he was lined up to make a play on that ball I bet you that's what they're going to call here they do an offensive pass interference for well, a rub route or what, are they going to do defensive pass interference there you go probably I'm going to say defensive pass interference we'll see what happens oh I don't I don't know oh, he's going to about to make the call they're here gonna, they're going to wave it off yep they're going to say nothing. There was a flag on the field, though, wasn't there? Um, I think they talked about it. And, uh, and then just waved it off? Well, it also helped the ball was in the dirt. Okay. Could have been uncatchable. There you go. So, all right. Third, third, third and third and 14, 15. 15. Third and 15. And we got a little reverse here to Beavers. What open field. He's going to try to make somebody miss. Does he get the ball out? The ball comes out when he's down. And he's going to be one yard Looks short. Looks like he's going to be short. He fumbled the ball right there at about the 19-yard uh, um, line. But that's going to be – looks like they're going to call it short. It's going to be fourth and one. I thought he was trying to reach out to the uh, to the sticks well, I think and fumbled it. But he was. So ball, ball, came, ball came out when he hit the ground. So it wasn't a live ball. His knee was down. His knee was down. Yeah. So they placed it where the ball was when his knee was down, which was a yard short. Gonna be fourth and one. Big big play right here for the, for both teams. Who's gonna win out on this one? Shotgun for the Titans. It looks like they're trying to draw them off sides. Got two seconds on the play clock. They're and just gonna let it, call the timeout with one second right there. That's what they were trying to do. Yeah, so trying Smart to get a hard decision count. there. Head coach for the South High Titans, uh, an old player I used to play college ball with at Fringe University, Russ Wells. He is a, uh, a South High grad as well, he and he is he now is. the head coach. Uh, what do you think? Third year, second. This year? is his third year. Third year, okay. Third year. Uh, he has a six and fifteen record as the head coach at South. Um, yeah, this is third year. Uh, they did not get a delay or have to take a timeout because it went oh. down to the quarter. Okay, so we're in the second quarter there, Ivan. You should have said, "Hey, Mr. Kettle, we're in the second quarter." I was just like, "Oh, the clock." I was looking at the play clock, and it ran out, but it must have been the. Uh, 
the game, game clock. clock. It's all that hamburger smell that I smell, man. It's it's making me hungry. We've got the Welcome. hamburger. You can see the smoke kind of. I don't know if you can see it on film or not, but we've got the uh, the smoke going from the grill over there. Uh, man, the parking lot is full. The crowd looks like a pretty good, pretty good crowd out here tonight. Um, no, and I, I had burgers before I came, but they were Impossible Burgers. I had, I had a big lunch because I knew I wouldn't have time and I'd be running around all over the place. So we had, we had a big lunch. We actually fixed dinner at home because. We were, we were, were there. at home. I, usually I pack a lunch and just eat at school every Friday or every day that we have school. But actually fix something for lunch because we knew both me and my wife. My wife's here at the game as well. And uh, my son's here at the game. So he's a senior this year here at Heights. Little little quarterback run. Just going to try to lead, run forward for a gain of four and, and they, a they first pick, down. They pick up the first Neil. down right there. But where are they going to place it at the night at the 14 yard line? Looks like South High is going to start it here after they picked up the first down. So it looks like they're going to be in a trips right formation. Um, coming out of the huddle, they the wide receivers already kind of know what what they're going to do. So um, get lined up on the line of scrimmage to tell the tell the old lineman that we're going to pass block here, and just a little. Like little five-yard yep. completion there to number nine. Um, that was their. I think that was was that their tight end right there. No, that's uh, their number nine is actually. Okay. Uh, his last name's Neil. I got to get the. Caden Neal. I Kaden believe. Neal. I believe it's the brother of, of their quarterback. Okay. So he is their. Second leading receiver with, but he has four touchdowns on the year, most of which came against North. Right, and you said that that was like a seventy-seven to nothing score. Seventy to nothing. Seventy and, nothing. And TJ Neal scored eight total touchdowns in that game. All right, run. There's a, there's a nice stop there for. Is that twenty-eight? I think that's twenty-eight. Is that thirty? Isaiah Yehuda, and run for uh, loss loss of two for Tolfrey on his first carry of the day. Or no, second carry. So he's still in the positive with the loss of two. Um, yeah, no, I can't see those numbers on their shoulders from here. I mean, I see that there's something there, but I can't see the number on the shoulders. I can see it in the screen when I got a close-up view, but sometimes it's hard to tell those numbers for heights because those shoulder pads and that jersey so tight on them, it's hard to see. Yeah, little flash fake, open wide receiver, but uh, dropped pick over there by number 13 for heights. That 13 right there, that's uh, Eliza Tresvant. They made a pretty good play on that. Defended it, going to bring up fourth and nine. Let's I don't know if South has a kicker, but this would be a spot where you would see Heights uh, bringing their uh, senior kicker, Caden Clausen, on and trying a, a field goal. Well, even even if you have a kicker, I don't know, you're down 28-0. to zero. You really have nothing to, nothing to gain by just putting three on the board. Oh, and they're going to get Heights oh. to jump off sides to make it a more manageable fourth wow, down. What a play right there for the, the Titans. That's smart by them. Looks like Heights was coming with the blitz there. And uh, good coaching there by Russ Wells and making that, uh, you know, a little probably got a call for something like that when they try to get yes. him to jump off sides. So you played you played with Russ at Friends? Played with Russ at Friends University, okay. uh, 90. Well, he's, a, he's a, a few years younger. He's a couple years younger than me. I was there in 94, 95, 96, and I believe he was there probably 95, 96, or 90, maybe my senior year. Okay. So next time I talk to Russ, I need to tell him about me being a ball boy for him. See if he remembers that. Yeah. Oh, going hard to the turf right there after that misplay, number four, four. getting up slow. And, and there looks like, like there's, there's a, a flag. penalty flag right there. Aubrey Come. Aubrey Clark is the uh, the receiver for for South. And Are they going to call pass interference there? Maybe got a little bit got there a little bit too early on that. I just know he missed that, and he just went hard to the. Yep. So pass interference on the defense, which will be uh, half the distance and first down. Automatic first down for the Titans. So you're going to have first and goal from the five for the South High Titans. Um, I would guess a quarterback run here. Heights has been bringing pressure. 
Yeah, they tried. Oh, man. Quarterback run, and he just carrying ball, carrying defenders for a touchdown. T.J. Neal for a five-yard touchdown run. Try to get that uh, the fake the end around right there, and he just made a couple guys miss, and what a heck of a run for Neal. And I'm, I'm picking up five yards on that touchdown run. I'm gonna look to see if they have a puller, and no, it's just, it looks like a draw, and he just, again, he just, he just, wanted, just, more. He just wanted to score. That's yep. just him willing them to score. Well, with this here, it looks like they're gonna go, um, I'm assuming they don't have a kicker if they're not even trying to kick the extra point, not even lining up to kick the extra point. And you see that a lot uh, nowadays in high school football. There's just not a lot of guys that uh, can kick the ball. And uh, that's a sad, sad thing because there's such an opportunity for those guys. But they're going to go for two and they don't get it. So no harm done there. Um, can you return for two points in high school? If it's No. No, okay. No. In college, you can. College, you can. And pros, you can. I always forget. No, Some, you sometimes cannot. those rules. You, you cannot. You cannot advance to block PAT for a touchdown in high school. Right. Um, and now, now I'm having flashbacks to my my Nebraska OU game where we had them and they blocked the P OU blocked the PAT and took it back for us. We had we had the momentum and everything. Uh, those crazy plays happen sometimes. Well, here we are. We have 9.46 remaining here in the second quarter. South High scores their touchdown. We'll uh, turn the band up here for a moment. Off. Kicking off for the Titans, you you have uh, number 21, Tolfrey. And he's just going to – it's going to be a little surprise onside, but – Was it surprise or did he just miss kick it? it looked, I couldn't tell. <laughs> well, I'm going to give him the benefit of the doubt because the angle it went off of his yeah. foot. Um, and the fact that he – I think he kicked the top of the ball, which is what you want to do. Um, it was a good play up there. I couldn't tell who, uh, who got that. I think it might have been number 41. Number 41, uh, Jamison Holland right there. And uh, uh, getting out, get on top of that ball and just did the smart thing right there, jumping on and not trying to advance that. But the problem is now you got 944 remaining here and Heights is in great field position to try to score again. And it looks like they're gonna line up in the I formation and they're gonna run straight up, trap, oh, trap. right up the middle to Millicent. Oh man. That's a formation, formation Kale, after my own heart, man. Kale Millison picked up 10, 20, uh, about 28 yards right there. That's the first time we've seen him carry. Uh, that's the offensive coordinator's son right there, Kale Millison, picking up a nice uh, chunk of change on that nice uh, first uh, first play. And that's a that's what I say. Did I say 28 yards. 20 yards. Looks like they're going to be in a little. Oh. They broke my heart and they didn't. They got no, out of eye. They're, no, they're, they're, they're back in there. eye. I'm. Oh, I'm. I'm they happy to see They got tied in over this way, so they got kind of an all right formation, and they're just going to run play action pass and try to put the see if DJ's going to roll out, maybe try to make a throw. He's just going to mm -hmm. run out of bounds and gets hit out of bounds hit hard. Of bound it's going to be a late number. hit. By but a, there's another flag, or is that the same flag? That's the same flag. Okay. So he threw it from there. Um, Caden Neal got a little, little too excited near the sideline. Yet to have a little more field wear awareness than that. DJ was um, giving it up early. Just went out of bounds. Man, took a hard shot right there on the sideline. And you know, number one for for Heights is that Patterson. Yeah, Adrian he Patterson. He came, he came streaking open right before uh, DJ just started to uh, scramble. So maybe, I mean. It looks different from up here than it does down there, but he had a he had a streaking wide receiver down the middle of the field. There you go. I was trying to listen to the uh, the official. I believe, I believe that official. Right, I'll, I'll I'll try to confirm who that official is at halftime. 
and it's got stories on him too, if that's who I think it is. Been around the game for a while. You always got stories. Oh, you on somebody, always, right? you always, <laughs> you meet, you meet people and you see them, and um, there's all these connections because, you know, coaching, playing, um, working with officials, you start to build those relationships. DJ Dingle making a couple guys miss, going to pick up about four yards right there. Maybe we'll give him five, five on that one. And uh, Robinson and uh, and Maztec team up for for the tackle there. I thought I thought we had somebody moving on the offensive lineman that might have jumped early, but they didn't call anything. So now it's going to be second and five here for the Falcons. Oh, and see if we can't score. I mean, we've still got plenty of time here with eight and a half minutes left to go here in the first half to score again. Going to give it on the end sweep. sweep to, to number was that three. Millicent? Number. Oh, we got a, we got a penalty. No. It looks like number three, R.J. Richard. But. And there is a, a penalty flag. flag. Yep, they're going to call holding. I mean, he pointed he pointed the wrong direction. He said on the offense, but he pointed to the defense. And, um, man, R.J. Richards Sr. right there, he liked that little jet sweep uh, going around the end, and he just didn't uh, – somebody held on the right side. Not sure who it was. But it's going to bring up about second and 15 now, back at about the 15-yard line. Well, yeah, because we can get, we can actually pick up a first down here on the. Oh, gotta be a careful! Tip. Wow, a little tip pass. Great concentration by eight one. For Eighty one right there. That is Jeremiah Yehuda, brother of Isaiah Yehuda. Yehuda Isaiah is on the defensive side. Jeremiah is on the offensive side. But man, South High defender was right there. Just kind of tipped it. I'm not. That was kind of a bad decision there by DJ, but he got away with it. Brings up third and about four. Wouldn't be surprised right here with pistol uh, John Randall and the pistol look might give it to the, him downhill. There we and go. And they do. And he's is he going to get in? And he's going to get in his right way there. In. Yep. Yes. Six yard gain, six yard touchdown run for John Randall. John Randall's got his second touchdown of the day. He had a five yard touchdown run earlier. And that makes a, a, his second touchdown. Am I, am I missing a touch? No, there's the other one. Okay, I was going to say we've got three rushing touchdowns and two, two passing, passing. Two passing. Yep. Okay. I was trying to find my other yep. touchdown uh, run. It was Lafayette, Washington. So uh, Lafayette has one, and we got somebody hurt down there. And that is uh, not the person you want hurt if you're South Is that High. Neal's? That is, that is TJ Neal, yes. Neal or, or is it? Ooh. That is TJ Neal. Now, if he if he, if he is out, that means put, puts his brother back at, at quarterback. They're looking at his knee. We got a close-up shot there of the knee, possibly. Say, is, that, is that Neal or is it is it Neal or is it Beaver? So is that two Can't or is tell. it seven? Is it two? Okay. Yeah, so. So they're going mean, to take a second right here to see if they see what they've got going on with that, and uh, we'll try to give you an update here. Um, looks, okay, it looks like he is. At least he's walking, walking off. off under his own. It may have been a cramp. I mean, they you say maybe they're looking at their knee, but the way I say the way the uh, trainer was was uh, holding the foot, it's probably a cramp. And he has to go off for one play. Yeah, got to go off for one play when they stop it. So brings on Caden Clausen again for another extra point. This he's right now four for four for extra points. And uh, looking to make it five. Looking to make it a thirty-five to six lead. Did I jinx it by saying that? Uh, no. But I might have jinxed it by telling you you didn't jinx it. We got it. Okay. There you go. 35-6 here. 7-24 remaining in the uh, second period. And uh, I was going to turn it up. The band don't have any band. Band's getting ready to go. They're marching down there for the uh, the halftime performance. Don't have any cheerleaders to turn it over to you. How about we play the Freddie Falcon thing one more time? Can you play me the Freddie Falcon thing one more time? 
the Freddie Falcon video. There's Freddie Falcon. Here's a couple years ago what happened with uh, Freddie Falcon and uh, the former South High Titan uh, head coach Kevin Steiner. The Freddie the Falcon goes over there and weighs it in front of him. He gets escorted off. Freddie the Falcon does. Gets escorted off here in a second. And, uh, uh, yeah, that was a great story a few years back here. Just a second. It's almost over. They're going to show him as, they're es as he's escorting him away by the uh, athletic director and the uh, I think it was the cheer cheer coach at the time. And we're back to football. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to try to play some band, show the band, show the cheerleaders, but we oh, had to bring Freddie the Falcon back out. Oh, they're getting ready for the, the epic halftime show we got. We got planned. the halftime show, and then after the game, we got the glow show. So stick around for that. Oh, wow, nice little run. Caden Claussen with a stop. Oh, and that is toll free for for South, and he just got taken out by the kicker. Well, um, he's no ordinary kicker. I'm telling you, Caden Claussen is a heck of an athlete. He's a swimmer. He's a, the goalie on the soccer team this year. He's a heck of an athlete. Used to play his freshman year. He played. He was my starting wide receiver Yeah. Uh, his freshman year and played all the time, played defense. He is. He's a heck of an athlete. That's a good stop right there. Um, I expect him to make that tack almost every time. He's no ordinary kicker. You, you can say that, but at the end I of the day, the end of the day, he has a K and a P at the end of his name. So no matter how good he is, hey, those put, him, those put him on the depth chart right now. He's probably, I guarantee if they're in, 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 a a in a pinch, they might put him out there on the, on the uh, defense. But okay. he's, he's on the defensive stats now, at least one he tackle. Is, I know he that. Is, and, and you always like to see that. So And you also, you also, if you're south, like to see Neil back out there. Um, he got one yard loss, but. Was it Neil or was it Beavers that went off that last time? Uh, Neil was went it off Neil? last okay. time. So brings looks like they're gonna about a loss of two. They're gonna say yeah, a loss of two, two on that one. Uh, Bring up about second and twelve. About just a little under seven minutes remaining here in the fr uh, first half. So yeah. Little double, little trips to the field, and that was a bad snap rolling back to. Uh, Back to the quarterback, um, gets him way behind the chains. That's going to be a team loss of about seven. Jaden Caldwell and uh, number 10, uh, Nate Campbell, were right there getting ready to pounce on that if Neil didn't for the uh, Titans and just puts them behind the mark here as they come up with about almost like third and 20. What do you have for third and 20? As an well, really, as an offensive coordinator, you just don't want to turn the ball over here. If you could pick up 10 or 15, that'd be great to just to try to get the ball away and play some defense. I mean, that's, yeah. you know, if it's the end of the game, you go, you try to do it, you try to pull everything out, out, out. But early in the game right here in the half, you, you try to play it safe right there. And are they going to go for it here at fourth and 10? And that was about a seven yard pickup there to get them back to the original line of scrimmage. They're going to go for it. Might as well. Down 35-6 to six right here. No, that's their punt formation. Okay, you're right. Yep, punt Neil, formation. Neil's a little further back. Again, he is their, he's their all everything. And Do everything for guy. for the Falcons, I believe that's number one, Adrian Patterson. And kicks he's it. End over end kick. Going to let it hit. Get away from it. Wasn't deep enough. And they're going to touch it about the 31-yard line. And over there on the left hash right here, so... DJ Dingle coming out. There's uh, offensive coordinator down there on the sideline. Malik Jared out giving the play. Looks like to Mr. Lafayette Washington, and he's going to send him out with the play and uh, see if we can get another score before the half possibly. If yeah, we have any old alumni people here, you know, back in the day before in the 1980s and early 1990s, the, all the way up to that point, Heights was not a factor at all in the football realm. So if there's any old-time alumni here, they might enjoy this game right now as we're up big time on south. Here's a pass right here. Good-looking pass over, over the, the shoulder. shoulder. Did they give him Is the catch? Is he going to call it? And they do. They say he catch, He caught the ball. Wow, what a play right there. And that was and an over-the-shoulder pass. I'm going to say I'm gonna 37 take, yards. I'm gonna, let's take a look at the screen down here. I don't know if he got it, but they called it a catch, so it's a catch. Well, the, the umpire, the, the, the line judge was way over here. I never saw the umpire back there. And, he, and umpire, we can't, yeah, and we couldn't see it because the the score was in the way. So umpire, that was a catch. Umpire right away went to the went to the catch. Oh, and that is a backwards pass. That's going to be falling like on Heights, by the foul. Heights got it, but. 
Yeah, they do that every once in a while. They fake a little play action pass inside and they flare it out to one of those receivers. Every once in a while, they throw a backwards pass. And right there, incomplete. It's not really incomplete, it's a fumble. It's a fumble. You gotta be careful. So clock, keep, clock, yeah, clock keeps moving and you give South an opportunity to get the ball. Almost could have been Lyman downfield. It was like an RPO. He threw that thing late, DJ did. And uh, bring up about second and 13. They're going to give it to R.J. Richard around the outside. He's going to follow his blocks. And another holding call, on our, not on R.J., but every time R.J.'s touched the ball, it's been holding. And a uh, good tackle there by uh, Shakir Harris. But, yeah, no, there's going to be another holding call on the edge. When, when you're on the edge, you have to be careful. You have to make sure you keep your hands inside and move your feet. And as soon as you stop your feet, that's when your arms get extended. That's when they see it. They didn't give us a number there. I just hold her yeah, holding they, on the offense. They don't, they're supposed to give a, a, a holding number, or they're supposed to give a, a who's the penalty on by a number, but they uh, this referee has not been doing that. They've just been calling it offense or defense. So Heights has still got uh, looks trips, trips, uh, trips to the field. Washington in the background, they're going to do a little flare out, maybe a fake, oh, and they're going to go deep. Nice little play action pass. Well, and and that's a, that's what we call, and you know, when you run the RPO, that's what you call a ghost. So I'm going to go ahead and let you Jeremiah, talk about the numbers, and I'll Jeremiah talk about the play. Jeremiah Yehuda from DJ Dingle for about 42 yards on that completion. Actually, we're going to say 46 yards, 46 yards on that completion. That's three touchdown passes now for DJ Dingle. So. What I was talking about a ghost route, and I, that's what we used to call it, was when you have the RPO, you have three wide receivers. All day they've been running the key screens out. Mm -hmm. They've been running key screens where it's short, short, short. Those wide receivers are blocking. And as soon as you see those um, defensive backs say, oh, I'm going to get blocked, so they give up a little bit or they, they commit to that key screen, that's when you call a ghost route. And that's why he was so wide open. That DB had a flat foot ready to, ready to get that key screen. He just got ran by. Another good completion there for or uh, connection there on the extra point. Caden Clausen, he is perfect on the night. Heights leads, 350 remaining here in the first half, 41 to 6 over Wichita South. Here's a good look at the cheerleaders down there in their uh, throwback unis. And we're back to football. Caden Klassen kicking it off. Nice high uh, kick. All right, toll free with the, with the return. And he is dangerous, breaks the tackle. I think he was staying, trying to stay away from Klassen. Well, Klassen, wasn't, uh, Klassen didn't make the tackle. I'm trying to figure out who that was. Was that 41? I think it might have been 41 there on the on the uh, Jamison Holland. I think on the tackle. Okay. 42 to six right now. Heights above South with three minutes and 39 seconds left. We'll see what uh, Neil can do to try to matriculate this ball down the field. Actually, that was Caleb Roper, number 20, or it could have been Isaiah Yehuda. I can't tell. Number 30 and 20 look so close, to, hard to tell. Neal, quick pass out, oh. dangerous throw. About Low. got it. That was Adrian Patterson there on the defense, about made that play, just a quick little out. Well, low and behind is not good when you're throwing it out. They were on the on the one hash trying to throw to the other hash. That is a dangerous throw right there. And that was to the uh, inside number two receiver. And that was a good break on the ball by Patterson, almost getting that pick. Brings up second and 10 from about the 30 eight yard line. 333 remaining here. All out blitz by the Falcons. Little fumble in the background and they're gonna put them back for a loss of about five. five and Pelfrey grabbed the ball and tried to run with it. 
or Tolfrey. Tolfrey was a baseball player. That was the Isaiah Yehuda right there on that play, man. He was, uh, he was, I think, one shooting through the gap on that blitz, and uh, gonna bring up third and about 16 now and for the Titans. Heights did a double, double inside backer blitz on that one, and was able to shoot through the gaps. Look like they're running more of a three-three well, stack at this point. You know they don't even have a down lineman. They're all, all they're all standing hovering. up. They're all hovering, standing up, and then I think it was number four up there. That's Kale Millison to kind of jump the gun. They were trying to get a, another pressure, and they're going to give back five yards, just what they just gave up on that sack. Well, and you kind of call this you kind of call this defense the radar defense because you're a little further off the ball. No one's in the stance. Um, offensive line, it's hard to block this type of defense and know yeah. where people are coming, so you have to be extremely gap sound. And there looks like there are a line, there's a bunch of guys up there in line of scrimmage just all hovering around. As long as you know where you're going on defense and make sure that everybody's got a gap, it is hard on the offense doing that. And they're going to try to get a quick slant, nothing there, incomplete. Little crossing route, and, and uh, Neal could not get it through to Neal. Was uh, it to his yeah, yep. Neil to Neil? Neil to Neil gonna connection. Be bring up fourth and ten. Uh, looks like they're just gonna set back here and punt, I think, this time. They bring I think they bring one guy on, one guy off, and they put uh, two wide outs out there and gonna punt it away. So at fourth and ten, they're gonna decide to take a punt. Oh man, almost, almost got that blocked. Called the fair oh, catch, didn't get it. Called the fair it. catch, but didn't get it. But they called the they, they called the whistle. it dead before the play was done. That was that was uh, number nine. Was uh, that's uh, Jaden Hamilton, and thank goodness Jaden Okoro uh, and he was right there to kind of get the ball. But I think it was a kind of a premature whistle. It was. They blew the they blew the play dead before the because they thought, oh, he's he's got it caught. Well, you can't do that. I, th I believe Heights got on the ball anyway, so no harm, no foul. So we got 238 remaining. 238 remaining in the, in the first half here. And again, South with their 3-4 defense. Um, Heights under center, just a toss to Randall. Randall. He's gonna cut it all the way back. And I don't think they're going to catch him on this one. No, they will gonna not. Going to go from a 71-yard touchdown run from the 29-yard line. So a 71-yard touchdown run for John Randall. Oh, and uh, that's the way to uh, put another score real quickly there for the Falcons. And that's uh, his third touchdown of the night. And that goes for 71. Well, and they, they did a little offset eye. Did a little offset eye. They pulled the backside guard. I think they did something like a buck. It looks like a buck sweep. But South actually had it well defended on the front side. Uh, Randall just has good enough vision to cut back and make a play. That, that's it. He's, he's such a good uh, decision maker with the ball and what he does and, does. and he's so slimy with it. He just finds little holes and finds gaps. And he took that one 71 yards for a TD. Here's Caden Clausen to remain perfect on the night. I believe that's seven for seven right there. And he is Are we to the 50 mark. Nope, 49. So Heights 49, Wichita South 6. Toll free back deep for the Titans. We'll see if Clawson kicks this through the end zone again, into the end zone again, or gives us another chance for an exciting play. Gonna be in the end oh, zone. Oh, it'll be in the end zone, which that's dead. Pretty, that's, that's pretty good. You can't bring it out, guys. I did not think so. Uh, the officiating crew is a little questionable. Like that right there, the ball's in the end zone. That blow that it dead. A dead ball. And now you 
there's a couple guys getting up kind of slow because they kind of stopped on the play. And, man, see, that's you're going to get somebody hurt. And who is that on the well, ground? You have a trainer out. The trainers are coming out for a Heights player. Yeah. Um, yeah. 20. Derek, yeah. Derek's Derek got that close-up view there on the camera. He, that's uh, number 20, Caleb Roper. That's down over there. And like I said, it, it should have been a – as soon as it goes in the end zone, that's a dead ball. I believe that if they catch it on the goal line, they can, they can either. I mean, I don't know. It's it's been it's, a, it's, it's been a about judge, th it's, it's a been about three call. it's been about three years since I took a rules the football rules test, so it may have changed. But um, it was it's my understanding that it's, I don't, a, it's is a dead it, ball. Is, is it his shoulder? Is it what, what do you think it is? I couldn't tell. Uh, the way hand? he's holding it, uh, I think. You know what? I, it doesn't look like anything. Maybe he got the wind knocked out of him. Okay. Or, um, he looks like he's more mad that he, they had to come out and, and see him. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's all right. I mean, Caleb is a, uh, uh, a junior, 5'11", 175. Yeah, because he went straight to the position group instead of uh, staying with the trainer. Yep, so. yep. Um, yeah, they put it at the 20. He was definitely not tackled at the 20. So yeah, they should have uh, They should have just dead balled it right there, touched back, and – so, and so we have trips here to the field, and and now we got what we got now. Are they? I I I don't know, and I don't know if they know. Well, and I can't I can't be too hard on them because I've never been out down there with the uh, with the striped shirts on, but we've got to figure something out. As long as they talk about it and they get the right call, that's the most important thing. Is you want right. you want to make sure that you get the right call. Unsportsmanlike on the what? On number 50, but I, I didn't Was see it, him. Did he say number 50 or did he say the kicker? Was there a number 50 on for heights on that feet on that team? I don't have a 50 on my roster, so I'm not sure what what the call was. You think he said the kicker? I think he said the kicker. So Caden Clawson better work, watch out. He's got one more chance to get it unsportsmanlike or else he might not be playing next week. That's interesting. I have to, We have to go back and look at that one. I, I don't know what they called. I couldn't understand what he said exactly. I tried to turn up the sound. Heights coming with the blitz. Just throw it up. Nobody's there. They, uh, can they be out of the pocket and throw it back to the line of scrimmage? I thought that was a college in uh, high school. or a Well, and I wonder – I, I don't know if they're going to talk about it. I know, I know there was a receiver at the hash, but he was coming inside. So, um, yep. They're not going to call a penalty. They're, they're just going to say go, incomplete let's go pass. Second, let's go to second down. Second down and ten, and they're going to just give him the play back here, and incomplete pass. So that stops the clock at two twelve remaining. Ivan's doing a pretty good job down there on the uh, the time. He, he does all the time and the score and the down and distance. Another pass. They're going to throw the ball up and just a little too long trying to go down the field um, you know, for for Aubrey Clark. You know, as a defense, I'm defensive coordinator right here. I'm thinking if they – it's third down right here, there's still plenty of time to score again. It's still the first half. Um Heights has, what do we got? We got all of our timeouts. We haven't, nobody's called a timeout, I don't believe. No. Um, so Heights gets a stop right here. You're looking probably a timeout, get the ball back, and see if you can't put a little two-minute offense here at the end of the half and see if you can't score again. Right, right. So, I mean, first half, you, you get as much as you can. And they're going to call a draw play to toll free that's going to get so them about a yard. Is Dingle, Dingle's going to call a timeout. That's a good smart job by him, calling the timeout. Now, if – as a, if South would have just ran the ball the first couple of times right there, yep. you probably, as an opposing coach, hey, they're just going to run it out. We're up. We'll just kind of let this thing go out, in my opinion. But when a team going for it, going for it, hey, you're just going to you're, you're fair game. Let's keep playing. I'm going to play like I should if it was 14 all there. So smart decision by by Coach Dingle of calling the timeout with fourth down and nine, and uh, they're going to probably punt. Going to give a good good spot here for the Falcons to possibly get another score with 155 down here on the other end I don't know if you can show that the other end Kyle see the there we are right down there coach Jared out was just talking with the offense down there 
There's uh, Coach Jared at the offensive coordinator and uh, Todd Sock Whitney uh, also down there. I think he's kind of a, a, a – he's the head freshman coach but probably coaches running backs and receivers. He's down there, and they're talking to him, hey, this is what we're going to do when we get the ball back. Well, and you would assume fourth and fourth and nine they're going to punt it, but they had a nice long huddle over there. They've been going for it. I wouldn't be surprised to see a fake here. I mean, what else do you have to lose? You have your quarterback back there. I know the that's ball. the thing too. Like they're nope. gonna they're gonna punt it. And a nice oh. little spinner, good just punt. Yeah, but takes an unfortunate roll at the end. It looked like it was gonna go down. I thought we might have could have gone over there and got it, but the, we didn't have any return on there at all. And uh, Heights is gonna get it at the where are we at? Were they gonna put 24. the 24? 24 yard line with what are we 145 remaining? You might have to finish this one out, Mitch. I'll I'll stick around here for a, a couple plays and see what Heights decides decides to do. Yeah, you you need to you need to take care of your other. other I know. Team. I gotta go. Uh, I gotta go play the music for the dance team here in a second. So I'll be. I got it ready to roll on my phone, and uh, we just play it from from there. I'm the dance supervisor. Don't don't forget that. You're the that, dance Mitch. coach. I'm the dance. You are the da you are the coach of the one of one of the best dance teams in the in the area. DJ Dingle and and it's rolling out and he gets caught from behind and hits the turf hard face first. And he's tracked down by number five, uh, Ross Robinson, for South. And the, the the clock keeps rolling. And I'm not sure why. Actually, the clock stopped. Now they get it rolling again. For whatever reason, they stopped it. Was it because they fumbled the ball, possibly, or the ball went out of bounds? But the, the clock does start. They're kind of uh, not sure what to do here. DJ still in the shotgun. He's going to throw it, and that's looking a, that's to throw it deep. Well, and that was another ghost route. He has an open receiver. Jump ball. Oh. And, and touchdown be saving tackle by Neal. But that's uh, Jeremiah Yehuda. About a 40-yard gain there for – for him on that one, so he's got a 46-yard touchdown and a 40-yard gain. And Heights hustling up to the ball. They're again, they're practicing that that no uh, that no huddle offense. Yeah, just a uh, little above one minute remaining. They're still yeah. going for it. Gonna throw it away here and gonna stop the clock with 101. Yep. And I'm gonna head out, Mitch. So you got the remaining of half as I will as soon as. Uh, we got the Pommies coming up here and just at the half, and we'll let Mitch finish this out. All right, so with 101 going uh, left in the half, it looks like Heights is going to go again where it's about second and 10 into a little quick tunnel screen, it looks like. A little quick tunnel screen to number 19, Chase Harris for what looks like to be a gain of 20. Little tunnel screen for a gain of 20. From DJ Dingle to Chase Harris, I knew it was a tunnel screen because it was a, an offensive tackle out there to go try to find a DB. It was one thing, one thing I love to do as an offensive lineman was go pick on defensive backs if I could. Uh, Dingle with the handoff to Randall. Randall. Dragging Titans, but doesn't quite get there. You have a gain of eight. And you have a Titan down on the field. Randall with a gain of eight to the one. And you have a Titan down on the field. It looks like that's number 60. Jaron Campbell. And that'll stop, that'll stop the clock. With 41 seconds left, and they're they're uh, tending to Campbell, who looks like he's in some pain. Um, good stand by the South defense on that that play. Uh, Randall with with a good hard run, thought he was going to make it, and then actually he's down to the two. Down to the two, so that's a seven yard gain instead. Right now, what they're looking at, they're looking. Looks like they're looking at a lower, lower extremity. But again, good stop by South. 
to uh, keep Randall in the end zone, out of the end zone. But right now, 41 seconds left. We have Heights up 49 to 6. All right, and you have, he is up, but not putting very much pressure down on that lower extremity. Looks like the left leg. Um, hopes and prayers go out to him. I was an offensive lineman who suffered some injuries when I was when I was playing. Those are never fun, and um, especially when you're you're having trouble walking. Let's just hope it's a little bit of a bruise, or but again. Thoughts go out to thoughts to go out to uh, Mr. Campbell because it's hard to play in those trenches. You get rolled up on, you get hit, and uh, looks like we're gonna have double fullback set. They're just gonna do a little bush push for DJ Dingle for a two-yard touchdown run. DJ Dingle. And like, like Mr. Kelly said earlier, we, we, we typically go to the band or the cheer, but they're getting ready to, to perform right now. Um, Caden Clawson with another attempt. This will be number eight on the night. We will see if he can put it through the uprights. And it is up and it is good. And he is eight for eight on the night. Caden Clawson with 33.5 seconds left on the clock. South high six, heights 56. Right now we have some, we have some uh, moths in the booth with us flying in my vision. So if you, if you see see one flying in the in front of the camera, no, it's not a giant monster. It's just a moth right in front of the camera. All right, back deep, back deep for the Titans. Back deep for the Titans. You have Beaver and Tolfrey's back there as well. Tolfrey's the one that had some explosive returns earlier. Um, interesting kick return formation. You have two lines. You have the, you know, five five up men with about 15, 20 yards behind. You have four and then one deep. Typically you see two deep or a diamond, but they're going to kick it into the end zone, and that's going to be a dead ball. It's going to be South High's ball at the 20 with 33 seconds left. We'll see what we'll see what Coach Wells has dialed up for for this last play, this last drive of this the uh, the series. Thirty seconds is uh, is enough time to get something going. I saw them against Norris score in two plays, their opening drive. So um, this this offense has some explosive ability, and you're gonna have. Blitz and then quarterback run, and that's the explosive ability there from Neal. Neal taking it down the sideline. Is he going to get caught? Yes, he goes down at about the 12-yard line. About a 70-yard, oh, about the 10, so easy, easy math for me, even though I was trying to do it in my head. 70-yard run and new life. New life in, in the Titans offense with 19.3 seconds left. And and uh, looks like they're going to go ahead and once those clocks get set, that, that clock is going to start running unless they called him out of bounds. And it looks like that's what they did. So that clock hasn't started running again. So 19, 
Oh, and you have a timeout for South, so they saw something they did not like um, in the Heights defense. But again, big explosive play from Neal. Like I said, I saw this team. I saw this team in person against North, scoring two plays on their opening possession. They have some explosive abilities. We'll see what Coach Wells has dialed up to attack that defensive front for the Falcons. And Coach Dingle's just saying, hey, we need to keep this score low. Do not let them get in the end zone before half. Little fade route and just a little long, so fade route to Fade route over, I believe it was to Robinson. In the end zone, trying to get something going. Or no, Clark. Second and second and goal from the ten. Actually, I think it's second and ten from the ten. They have the they have the chains out there as if they could get to the inch yard inch line and and make it, but Neal rolling, and it's sacked by a tower of Falcons for a loss of it looks like 12, 13, and the South is gonna go ahead and take a timeout. I'm back, Mitch. We got a little time. I guess the they're actually at halftime here. They're gonna do the Hall of Fame introduction first, and then we'll dance after that. So I was like, oh, I got some time to come back over here and talk to Mitch. There we go. There and, we wow, go. what a play that was for and, Neil. And yeah, he's an explosive. He was fast. And, and I didn't know if we could catch him. And just, just before I, I, I said that, I was talking about how they have explosive play potential. And, uh, and Neil has shown his, his elusiveness all season. He actually was there, was really good against Carroll as well as North. So he went and he, he threw for 293 against Carroll and rushed for over 100 yards on the uh, number two ranked team in 5A. Yeah, they've got a battle tonight. We didn't check on that at halftime. We, need, See, we, we need do to need to because the, check whole, on the, the Holy War the tonight. The Holy War is going on at Cessna. At Cessna Stadium, yeah. Is they, it Cessna? Or? They're, they're at Cessna, and they actually, you know how they used to have everybody on one side? Uh-huh. They're splitting it up, Carol on one side, Capen on the other. Well, probably a good idea. Yeah. Well, here um, it is. This is going to be the last play of the half, 4.4 seconds on the scoreboard. This will probably this will be the last play of the game. Heights is going to bring it. And they don't even have a – oh, my oh, goodness, I take that back. big athletic play. He's going to throw the ball up. And Heights with the interception gonna on that play. Going to be intercepted. Can't tell. Is that 13? Is that Tresvant? That is 13. Yeah, Eliza Tresvant right there on the, uh, on the interception to end the half. So, at the half, Heights 56, South 6. Stick around, we've got uh, some Hall of Fame introductions. Uh, this is the first ever Hall of Fame. Heights is, doesn't have a Hall of Fame. You hear a lot of other schools have Hall yes. of Fames in their schools and stuff like that. Well, Heights has never done one, uh, never had it, never started it. Well, Mr. Uh, Eric Filippi, our principal, this is our, his second year as principal. He, former Heights student, and now he is the principal, and he is coming back, and he started up wanting to do a Hall of Fame, and to Tonight is the introduction to those people. There's a ceremony tomorrow night in the gymnasium. It's homecoming. Everybody's coming back. Coming back should be a, a, an exciting uh, um, evening. Uh, right now, especially get to know those people. We'll turn up uh, Mr. Graham and let you guys. He'll talk through every everybody and all the stuff like that. And then we'll uh, uh, come back with the dancers. It's going to be a long half. I think we got about a 15-minute half. Is it 15 normally? So it's 20 for 20 homecoming, I believe. So I, I, might, I might go ahead and take a nap. Yeah, take a nap. You're good.
Well, we're back here at the second half. Heights leading 56 to six as we start this second half. Uh, Heights uh, uh, doing a little bit on the ground and by air. DJ Dingle with two touching uh, or two touchdowns passing. One to um, uh, got to look at my roster again. I just uh, lost all track of thought right there. Number 12 Lafayette Washington and number 19 Chase Harris, and then the other three touchdowns. Uh, is for four touchdowns, three of them by John Randall, one of them a 71-yard touchdown run. And there at the end of the half, number two, uh, D.J. Dingle with a little quarterback sneak. He gets in on the, uh, the, uh, um, the points, and that's where we're at here at the second half. And it looks like Heights is going to be kicking to the north-south receiving. Now, and go ahead. The leading, leading – uh, leading stat getter for the Titans is, is uh, T.J. Neal. He has a little over 100 yards rushing and a rushing touchdown. Um, so I think what we were going to talk about was what happens when they're up by. that. That's exactly right. So new rule. Hopefully they stop the music. First of all, you can't play music when they're – I wonder if they realize – oh, there they go. There we go. So the whole second half is going to be a running clock. I think they started – they start it once the ball is either touched on a kickoff okay. or be the first play. The first play. Okay. Um, and up by 50, that's a new rule. And wouldn't you know it, we're up by 50. If they would have exactly. had that extra point. Now, I think if we would have, if we were up by 49 right now and the first time we get the 50, it automatically starts. Okay. Is that correct? Uh, I believe so. I okay. believe once after three, once you're up by 50, and it's after four if you're up by 40. Right. Which is the running clock. Yeah. Yeah, the, the rule has always been in the past was at only a running clock in the fourth quarter up by 40. But that's yes. a new new case your rule. If you're up by 50 at half, it mm -hmm. is automatic and running clock, and it goes the, the whole time. Yeah, and it was adopted last year, I believe. Yep. Um, so, yeah, nice, Eight. nice long, nice long halftime. Yeah, we had 20-minute halftime there for the Hall of Fame introductions. Then we had the little Heights Pommies dance team out there dancing. And then uh, they played some uh, some old music. Uh, again, all those things would have been copyright violations well, uh, with the music we were playing well and uh, I stuff like that. I didn't, fun. I didn't take my nap, which I'm, I'm glad because I, I would have missed a great dance dance show. Kudos, to, kudos to the dance coach. There he does go. A, he does an amazing job. And uh, and then some of my karaoke favorites were playing uh, on the yes. – uh, uh, over the over the loudspeaker, so I belted out inside here by myself. I was singing a little bit too when they were playing some of those old songs. Uh, well, anyway, so well, even speed if option, <laughs> speed option to toll free for a gain of it looks like eleven. And looking at most of those no, guys out there on 15. defense, it still looks like they got their starters. There's Jaden Caldwell. There's Adrian Patterson. Um, there's uh, who else is out there? Uh, Kel Millicent, they're all looks like the Heights defensive starters are still out there. And even if what I was getting ready to say, even if South gets under 50, even though it's at 50, it's a still running clock. So, yeah, the clock still um, goes. It's still going to be a running clock. The only time it's going to stop is for a timeout or an injury, and that's when they'll stop the clock. So, you'll see Heights uh, try to put the uh, hammer down and probably try to get one more score here. And if they get one more score, I bet you they're going to start bringing in a lot of their. They're JV guys and stuff like that. It's also – it's tough as a coach. Like, do you actually put your JV guys in there when the other team still has their starters in? You know, that's it, that's you, the you kind have, of dilemma you, that you have to play. What you have to do is you have to gauge – you have to gauge the competition level because you don't want to put the JV guys in there if you believe that they're going to get hurt. Right. You don't want to do that. But it's also great to have your JV players go against varsity players from other school because that's the level – that they know they need to be at. Right. So it's a learning experience for them. So it's a, it's a hard decision to make as a coach. And, and a good learning experience, too, because you get to be in front of a, a full crowd stadium. Uh, not to say that we're a full crowd, but it's a good crowd out here, and there's a lot of people in the standstill here in the second half. And uh, it's just fun to play in front of people instead of on a Monday night when there's right. just your mom and dad and right. a couple other mom and dads, and that's about it. Yep. Oh, yeah. And it looks like we're up to a, a – Third and long, third and long for for the looks like at about the 30, 35 yard line right there. It's kind of it was an incomplete pass right there. Yeah, two incomplete passes in a row. Got it. Uh, we talked about some of the games to watch. I know either on or off the mic. We looked at halftime. Uh, one of the games to watch around the, around the town. And oh, great effort there to break some tackles by Pel by. Uh, 
toll free. Yeah, Nate Campbell was there first. He made a good stick, but couldn't bring him down. And then it, I, th I believe it was number one, Adrian Patterson out there that kind of finished him off from his corner spot. Yeah. And looks like their uh, South is probably gonna punt the ball. John Randall goes out. Uh, Jaden Hamilton coming off the field, number nine. Yeah, so like I was saying, some of the, the games to watch, Mays versus Mays South was a big hype okay. game. Okay, did little, you get the score rival. on that one? Uh, it's 21 to six at half. Mays is leading. Mays up on May South, okay. And uh, and then we talked about the Holy War is going to be pretty good. The number two and number three ranked team in 5A um, going against each other. And they were tied at half at 14 a pop. And they kicked the ball to Randall. And he gets up. I mean, he, t he doesn't catch it on the, on the uh, catch, but gets it on the bounce and gets about a 10 or 15 yard return right there so the Falcons are going to start right there right about the 35 yard line on the left hash closest to us and we'll give credit for the tackle there on Beaver who was running down and being the little gunner yeah someone else had him wrapped up I think but then Beavers was the one that had somebody kind of slowed him up uh, he almost ran into one of his own guys right there I think yeah. Randall did so it looks like they're going to be in that offside eye again and run a little bit of toss to Randall outside. He cuts it up for a gain of about three. And good little, good tackle by their linebacker, number 30, 32. Number 32 is uh, Felix uh, Macias. No, I didn't reveal this in the first half, but in the first half, well, all, this week at school, I have DJ Dingle in class, and he was in a boot. He, really? had, a, he had an ankle sprain. Uh, at the game last week. Here's a little mm -hmm. trap right Another up the trap middle. again. Millicent up the middle for about 15 yards. But, yeah, DJ Dingle was in a boot. I was like, dude, what happened? He said, oh, I just kind of sprained my ankle a little bit. It'll, it'll, I'll be fine by tomorrow night. And sure enough, he's out there playing tonight. Well, you but don't probably just you precautionary about reasons. Say you don't see him limping around very much. Mm -mm. But I also noticed he hasn't run the ball as much either. Might just be because of that, you know what I'm yeah. saying? Keep him, keep him safe. Are they going to go – are they going to go illegal substitution on that one? I guess not because they really never did huddle. Yeah. They had a couple of guys come off. I don't think they have a guy on the sideline over here. Really, it should have been – there was three guys down here. I don't think anybody was on the line of scrimmage. Did you see that? I don't believe so. I think it would have been too Let's many see if people we in the backfield. Let's – we can watch down here because they might have a tight end and on top. I Unless know. they're counting this guy down here at the very bottom. But we, we're pretty – pretty tight on that that view are we in the wide view at for the play there's the wide view there we we should have pretty much everybody so we're in the wide view right now some guys out there talking I don't know if we maybe we're in the wrong well, spot did we get a late call false start well they had trips right and I mean the, the clock still runs yeah the so. clock still runs no matter what. So that's something that run. you're going to have to fix, Ivan, because when you put the flag up, the clock stops. You know what I'm saying? So you, what you might do, just don't put the flag up on the screen and just – oh, it's not? Even better. Perfect. Awesome. I thought when we put the flag up on our, our little uh, – our virtual scoreboard that it might uh, – A oh, little swing pass, and that's – Oh, and they – Smart that play there by DJ just to get rid of it. They brought the everybody up the middle. Well, DJ just threw it away. Yeah, and that was dangerously close to being another backwards pass. Yeah. Then that – did that once. Luckily, we uh, we uh, got on top of it, and it wasn't a turnover. But now it's going to bring up about third and about 17 here for the Falcons. And and with this offense, it's more attainable. Um, we, we, haven't, we haven't said the – we haven't talked about their former offense at all this this mm. uh, game, but okay, so long. The old flex bone. The oh, they flex. got a little. Uh, they gonna throw a flag. There's and a they flag. There will be a flag. And it's gonna be, gonna be an unsportsmanlike. And I did not see what well, happened. Well, John Randall was on the bottom of that, and one guy kind of just threw him. I saw he, he was on I'm his back, and another guy just kind of shoved him. I'm gonna watch while he was on the ground. I'm gonna watch the, the replay oh. and see what I've got. And we got the. We went to the other view, and so we don't get to see it. There was a little scuffle, and yeah. And, uh, Let's see what happens here. 
John, I, I'm kind of watching it there at the beginning. John was blocking a guy, and I think at the very end of the play, he kind of pushed off. They're going to call it unsportsmanlike on. On white, but on we don't white. have a number. It was seven. It was a. Uh, it was Bieber. Okay. Yep. Yeah, so John was blocking him out there on the edge and at the very end kind of pushed him away a little bit, and then he, the other guy kind of retaliated, and while he was on the ground, shoved him into the ground one more time. I well, saw that. And like I tell everybody, when I, you, the second person always gets caught. Yep, here's fourth no and one for the Falcons. Going to run trap, trap on again. fourth and one to Millicent. And we got a little bit of tempers flaring on both sides of the ball here. And uh, you saw uh, an offensive lineman kind of shove someone there to the ground, and then everybody else was rounded up over there at the end of that run. Not sure exactly what happened in there. It's just it's getting to the point where it's getting a little chippy. Yeah, Heights really mm -hmm. has to be – that they're the ones that really got to be careful um, being, being up because being up, you, you know – they were three and two. You're good. They're getting ready to probably be four and two here. Um, but for a team that's with one win, it's tough um, to not stay out of that kind of thing. Every, both teams just need to be smart here so they can play next week. You get kicked out of one game, you're also out the next game. Well, and we we saw that we saw that a few weeks ago against Northwest. Oh, just off the fingertips, is that Chase Harris? Yes, 19, Chase Harris. DJ put it right on the spot, and Chase Harris just couldn't come down with it, missing the ball at about the three or four-yard line. No, we, we saw that a little a few weeks ago against, against Northwest where one of Northwest's defensive linemen got thrown out of the That's game. That's right. Could not play the next game, and uh, they didn't. They lost to Capen that That's next right. week. They played a very tough Capen team. Where are those uh, city league results? We had well, city league. I looked. I looked at look it, and not all bit? of them are all on there. I think oh, the, really? Yep. The top. Okay. The top of the city league right now is Capen. Um, oh, he catches it. Kind of a juggling catch there for Chase Harris. About a 30-yard pickup there for going to be first and goal at about the six-yard line. DJ zipped that little, had a little play-action pass, and zipped that post in there. And Chase Harris, what a catch. Yeah, so I know right now the top of the city league is caping because they have no losses. Uh, Carroll is tied with them, um, but they have a loss five, against five, Derby. No. Here's everybody. Oh, here we go. Yeah, this I is like, this is like league, league, I think. League, yeah. I, but that can't be right either. So I, this has got to be it over here, the 5-0. and oh. Yep. So caping at the top. Oh, did we miss a touchdown? It Holy like cow. We did. Who was it? R.J. Richard, number three, finally got in the end zone. Every time he's cut, touched the ball, he's been, uh, been had a holding call, and there he goes over the the right corner of the end zone. We were talking, looking at the city league standings, and I totally missed that. My fault, R.J. R.J. Richard with the touchdown. Yeah, so I mean, you looking at Cape and Mount Carmel at the top, and I think this is sorted by points against. That's why I thought it was uh, weird, because then you have Carroll, and then. Heights and Northwest are tied, but I know Northwest has the has the head to head. No, he misses it, pulls it left. Caden Claus, and he was a perfect eight, uh, for eight. eight for eight, and now he's eight for nine. I don't know if it was the hold, the snap, whatever it was. I think it's the fact that we didn't try to jinx him beforehand. We didn't talk about it. Yep, we just let him kick it, and there you go. And then so East East is sitting at two and three right now. Um. Southeast and West, they're both one and four, and North at zero oh and five. And the only other score in the city league I have is because I have a vested interest is North and and uh, North and who? West. West. And West is up, I believe, forty nine to six. Forty nine six. Okay. Yeah. So this will be the yeah. That's the end of the third quarter already. And let's see. Oh, I guess both teams had the, had one possession. Uh, height scored on their possession, and that's it for the quarter. Football would be a fast and game if you really just let the clock run. Yes, it would. Wouldn't be so long. We'd be out of here in like 30 minutes, though. Well, and we, you, you, when when you did the uh, the flex bone, those games were all short because all you did was run the ball. The ball is I, always running. I still remember playing 
coaching at North when we did the single wing versus the flex bone, those were really quick games. Yes. Because both, I think both teams are running and the clocks never stops and uh huh. And maybe I know I know at North we maybe threw the ball about I don't know four times a game if that. Clock was always well, running and, and you know back when I was coaching as well when we had it we didn't want to we didn't want to throw the ball either we just wanted to run the ball that was kind of the uh, the flex bone mentality and and you do a play action pass every once in a while just to uh, to try to get some points as well if you need it uh huh oh uh, now they call it yep well and you. Scott Moser once told me, and I'll, I'll always remember it, two, <laughs> when you throw the ball, three things can happen, and two of them are bad. So Incomplete or an interception. Uh-huh. Yep. Yep. You That's run it. Really, you got you, you run forward or you, or you gain or you, or you uh, get a run for a loss, really. That's about it. Yeah. Maybe yeah. score a touchdown. Maybe score a touchdown. <laughs> <laughs> really, what Heights has been running these last few series with the, uh, the eye is what I really enjoy. That's what I. That's what I. That's my. Uh, you know, my course, favorite formation I believe, is the eye. I believe Millison used to coach with old Sharts. Okay. Yeah. Um. Over at Northwest, he was at Northwest when Weston Sharts was there, and you know Weston Sharts. He's an he's, eye guy. He's, he's the uh, he's the coach at, over at Capen right now, and they they run the eye. They run the power game, and I think that's uh Millison has that in his back pocket that he's teaching just a little bit of uh, eye formation and and running the ball downhill, especially with. A guy like Randall is pretty good out of the eye. Well, yeah, he's the quintessential eye back. So good little thir 12, 13 yard pass over f to uh, number 89, Owen Mullen. And Caleb Roper, Caleb Roper with the uh, tackle there for the Falcons. Well, and, and going back to the eye conversation, I mean, my dog is named ISO. <laughs> if I ever get there a you go. If my next dog will probably be named Trap. There you go. Um, and then power and counter. Power, counter, buck. There you go. Yep. A little rollout here. Going to – nice little pitch another, and catch. Another good little pitch and catch over to 89. Owen Mullen using his – using the tight end a little bit for another seven yards. So that's – that's 24 yards on this drive. Uh, uh, we're going to give that tackle to number 31, Cortez Aikens. Aikens on that one, number 31. And I'm I'm keeping a hold of his stats because he was only 95 yards away from breaking the 1,000-yard mark. Who? Uh, Neil. Neil, Neil okay. in passing for this season. Well, he'll get close. So if he can keep going, it looks like they have a, a penalty is. flag. Probably a holding, either a holding or an illegal chop block. From where they threw it was a line of scrimmage. So you either have so a, a chop block where an old lineman went low and another one went high. Typically those are done by an accident. Yeah. Um, you know, so we're supposed to cut. No, we're not. Okay. Well, we just got a 15 well, South penalty. South is going back. Chop block. Yep. So I don't know if that microphone's working very well. You haven't been able to hear the referee very well. Yeah, and that, that's going to be the legal chop block, and that's what I—that's what he did. He, that, he went down to his knees. The official did. That's what I figured. When you when you see when you see something in that area, typically on a rollout or a pass play, you get a holding outside of the pocket. When it's inside the pocket, it's going to be something like a chop block. As a center, I got a hold away with a lot of holding inside. Yeah, because you, 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 you got don't five see guys it. around you. The tackles are the ones that always get you know the holding yep. calls as those defensive ends come screaming around the edge. Well, this brings up about second and 15. Little quick south oh. is just run a little quick dump there to the tight end and had a pretty good little play if they could have caught it. But incomplete pass going to bring up third and 15 now. And the clock just keeps tick, tick, ticking away. We're already under nine minutes to go in the game. All right, south comes back out and. Oh, never mind. We're good. Little blitz off the edge. Neil's going to go and scramble. He's going to try to make something happen. Lowers his shoulder and takes a hit and gets about a five-yard rush. Um, we're going to give that tackle there to, I believe. Man, it's so hard to see those numbers. Maybe I need to bring some binoculars up here. Are my eyes getting that bad? Can you tell I who it was? I wasn't going to say. Okay. All right. 
They're going to be punting. They will. Going back, I can see that. See number 22, Avante Scales going back to take this punt, to receive the punt. Neal is left footing it. And good little punt. Going to catch it. Can he get to the edge? Oh, He's going to cut careful. it up. And then the Beaver got him. You got to be careful. You used to be able to. That's where you get, you know, get lit up by those blindside blocks. And they've they've really done a good job on the rules now that you don't they don't allow that to happen anymore. And it's pl um, player safety is the yep. biggest thing. And yep. and I know a lot of I know there's a lot of people say, oh, that's that the most exciting thing in football. It's also what ruined a lot of people's football careers. Yeah. So yeah. Um, you got to work on safety first when it comes to that stuff. Now I believe we've got a whole JV guys in here now. Got it looks like a different backfield, different receivers. I think there might even be missing someone. There we go, number 22, who just took that uh, punt. Avante Scales is back in the field. Well, and bad snap, but Heights is going to get to the edge. And I don't think we had enough guys on the line of scrimmage, actually. It almost looked like the tackle, or the right tackle, was lined up in the backfield. And so they might have uh, called not, not enough guys on the line of scrimmage. Yeah, we do have a flag on the play. And that's a holding. Okay. Yeah, I don't I I don't I don't like the whole calling a tackle off off the line of scrimmage. I but did you see again him? when yeah, I saw him. <laughs> I saw him. He I would I wouldn't mind off. if I wouldn't mind if my offensive line would look like a V. Yeah. Because the more more room in front of them, the better they had chance they had to pick up any movement. Yeah. So uh, there was often times I got but this right tackle looks like he's a slot. Now, he did kind of come in a little bit there. It looks like he did a little fold block. Carry right there to number 25, Dennis Carter. 5'11", sophomore, 160 pounds. And picking up about uh, two yards on that play. Yep, tackle made by their middle linebacker, number 32, uh, Felix Macias. And, yeah, no, that, I, that, that tackle, he was just a little game playing right there. He knew he had to fold under the guard. So, giving himself a little advantage because watch, he's not going to fold on the guard. Ah, maybe he is going angry. toe to toe to heel, there. But still, I I don't I don't like that. I'd like my offensive line to be in a nice little V. And Beavers coming in and making a big play for a loss. Scales with the loss on that number twenty-two. Really, it was more of a play by the by the by um, Beavers. Beavers. On that play Beaver. right there. Beaver. Beaver, we sorry. Keep, we keep adding S's. That's I know. I apologize at home if you're t calling us idiots at home. I know how to read, I promise you. So it looks like. Looks like, yeah, third and uh, 30. Third and a mile. Yeah, oh, and Little a bad, bad snap, snap, and South is going to pick it up and get the ball. And you're going to have South High football at the five, six, at the six-yard line. At the six-yard line, just a bad snap right there. Um, the quarterback is number 15, Isaac Flores. Isaac Flores was the uh, is the quarterback, and the ball was just a, a – it snapped down at his feet. I say it did roll. It rolled to him. Yeah. Well, South is going to get another opportunity. It's not like you're trying to preserve the shutout. You know, a lot of times when you have this, you got the zero up there, man. You don't want to give it. You want to keep that shutout going. But uh, they've got their uh, their second team defense in there, and I believe this is still their one offense. So. But yeah. Right. Right now is all about trying to get experience. Ball kind of lo too low right there on the quick little slant. Couldn't tell who was that receiver. All right. I do have a, a few more updates. Uh, Carroll beating Capen. Carroll won. Oh, Car in the fourth quarter, 27 to 21 right now. Oh, it's, don't so have it's time still, on that? Still close. Nope. Andover Central who is undefeated and playing really good ball is down 14 to seven at Salina Central. At Salina Central. Here's uh -huh. Neal with the keeper. And a touchdown, six yard run. Neal, that's his second of the ball game. Um, 
Mays up 42 to 20 now. Um, it looked like Northwest is up 60 to six at halftime against Wichita Southeast, who Heights has next week and South has Northwest. So they're gonna just send see the same film. Yeah, um, Heights who Heights has, Heights has Southeast. Southeast. Yep, that's so who we got next week. Home game, senior night uh, for us, and then we've got um, man, we got a tough one after that. We go we go to Stryker to play Capen mm -hmm. in week number eight, and then uh, uh, with the Keisha playoffs, you don't know who you're going to play week nine. So that's when it all comes out is right after week eight on oh. on that Saturday following, as long as there's no weather delays. And you don't know who you're going to play week nine. You don't know if you have a home game if you're one of the tweener teams, yep. which right now at three and two, you're going to be go to four and two. We looked at, I, I was looking at it and I, I think we got a pretty good shot of hosting that last week on the on October 29th, a first round game. We'll probably be if we can go if we can go six and two, definitely. If we can beat yes. Capen, we're definitely gonna be hosting the game. If we could be five and three and maybe some other things happen, I still feel like at five and three we might be a top eight, maybe a seven or an eight seed yes. and be hosting um, uh, at five and three, so we'll just have to see uh, how it goes, how it plays out here. And, and that's a cool. I like the I like the Keisha pl playoff system, how they've done this and um, kind of seed it out. And yeah. here's a return for Washington Lafayette. Washington's going to get it. He gets it about a ten yard return, and that almost going to do it. The Heights might be able to have one more offensive play here. And that was got to be the fastest half of football. Yes, when so the, with the running clock for both quarters. Right. Some wow. more some more scores. It looks like e Wichita East took down Garden City, twenty eight to zero. That's a wow. surprising one. Yeah, Garden, Garden City was three and one, four yes, and one. And they were ha they had a really good. Uh, they were one of the best defenses in the state. Um, Garden City run the flex ball now. That's how you. Yes, that. they did. They do. Um, let me see. A well, few they, more did the, uh, they did at the. They did at. The Jamboree, we hosted a Jamboree, and looks like Heights, uh, are they going to get a play clock off? They're just going to they're just gonna kneel it. They're just going to go victory formation, and that's going to be it. DJ takes it up under center, and that's going to be the end of the ball game. So you see the cheerleaders. We get a shot of the cheerleaders down there maybe. There's the cheerleaders right there singing, I believe that we have won. And here comes the, the Heights is uh, rounding up, and that's going to be our final. Still got 20 seconds. Oh, there it goes. About three seconds left, and that's going to be the ball game. Heights 62, Wichita South 12. Stay tuned. We're not going to leave. We're going to stay right here. If you want to watch the Glow Show, we will be here for the Glow Show and uh, try to turn up the music and see what we can see for the Glow Show. So, Mitch, we appreciate you. Derek, thank, thank you. you. Ivan, appreciate it. Xavier and Kyle. Everybody did a great job tonight. See you guys all in class next week. Mitch, you're not going to be here next I week. I won't be here. I have to do, I have to Who's do up? my due diligence. Who wants to talk with me next week? So, Who wants to be the counterpart? Kyle, you want to be on camera? You want to be talking next week football? Uh, Kyle's yes. going to do it. Kyle, Kyle's Good. ready. He, I know he's a big Chiefs fan. He watches a lot of football. So Kyle is sometimes hard to get those kids to talk a little bit. But Kyle's ready. I know. He's going to do fine. Good. Good. So we'll uh, – We'll talk about it all this next week, and uh, that's the final. Mitch, we'll see you. So hopefully, uh, we, hopefully, hopefully week nine. Week nine, like we'll see. That. I'll let you know if we like host that final game. And, again, for all you guys, uh, stay tuned. We'll be back for the Glow Show whenever the band is uh, ready to do that.
sorry about the little technical delay there. Uh, I believe we are, we're good to go. Um, actually turned off our power switch to our everything. So we got it back and running, we're back.
Thank you guys for doing an awesome audience. Give these guys everything you got. Fan, let's go.